Okay, so okay, I, I recovered the second part of class, so phew. Uh, we didn't lose all that. Someone brought a snack. What was that? That's something that's uh, pleasant. What, what, what you got there? It's very healthy. Good deal. Yeah, it's, it's important. It's, yeah. uh, okay, so uh, the emulator is running. Um, and like some of you, I think, are getting it to work too, I hope. Yeah? Hey, yeah, yeah. So yeah, right. So well, actually, what are what are some of the challenges that people found? So so someone didn't have enough disk space, so you need to make sure to have enough disk to run the emulator, and it seems like it takes gigabytes and stuff. Um, uh, memory, you said eight eight eight, eight gigs. No, mine's no? Fine. yours I okay. Mine's okay. And what platform is it running? Is, is it macOS? I can't tell from yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Are uh, people getting to work on Windows? Yeah. Anybody's got a Windows laptop? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Phew. So this is what I wanted to make sure we could do. Get this far. So uh, for tonight, I think this is good enough for Android. I, but I guess, you know, here, let's play with, it, play with it a little bit. You can do things like adjust the volume. It's because literally it's... You can, set your, you can set your background. Right. It's actually a device, right? You can sit there and play with it. Uh, and stuff. you can take a picture, uh, like a screenshot of it, I guess. Um, and then, yeah, you can... Uh, you know, you can uh, you interact with it. I don't know, you can send text and stuff like that. Yeah, you can open up a browser <laughs> on it. And, so, and so, so, so seriously, this is all part of the Android development experience where you need to run your app on various um, emulators or various devices to make sure that it looks good. Um, and so, you know, you can rotate it and, uh, and stuff. So obviously that doesn't actually... <laughs> yes. I don't know what this, that thing does. Anyway, and you can turn it off. You can power it. You can power it down, and then you can close the emulator. How do you uh, how do you toggle the emulator once you close it down? Sorry, toggle the emulator. Yeah, if you want to run it again. Yeah. Right. It even remembers which state you left it in. Um, you, if you, yeah, if you install multiple emulators, um, although for this class we're just going to have one, which and we're just going oh, yeah, that right, one that we right. used here. It was the pixel, whatever the heck. Okay. So then, is there another view that doesn't require you to look at this emulator, like another development screen, or is this kind of the idea that we're we're going to like be toggling back and forth between our code and then running it with the well, here's, um, we're not going to dive into this too deeply tonight, but here is the, um, here's the, uh, the, oh boy, I'm going to date myself, the WYSIWYG editor, the, uh, you know, the editor for, um, for your activity, for the, for the UI, for your activity. So, yes. So, so, we, you know, you can use this to, like, draw everything. I, mean, I don't know, let's, let's try something. Let's add a button. You know, you do this, yeah. Here, it's like, you know, click me. <laughs> what what you know click me I know right yeah and then I don't know run it again so see what we get yeah yeah boy I just can't like oh wait use same selection for future launches okay I'll check that later so it's you know it's clearly taking some time because it's probably got to rebuild the application or or maybe I guess it's probably got to like download a new version of the application so that might take a little while. And by download, I mean you put it onto the emulator. Yeah, this does take a little while, doesn't it? I said, I said the build finished. Oh, maybe? Does it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, what? Well, it isn't doing anything right now. Anyway, so this is where I hope it gets fun <laughs> for, for you guys. Right, that you know, you get to play with some like powerful stuff. You get to make stuff that's real world, um, and so we'll. So, so but first, you get to do Project Four. So you gotta like do some REST API crap, and then you get to play with like you know the the, the fun toys. Um, did, have you got it to work on yours? Yeah, you did. Okay, good. Okay, it's just kind of dog slow and has memes about it. But anyway, um, yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll go way more in depth into this next time. Okay, so. Um, 
your project four, so you had a little bit of lab time uh, and things like that. What are, what are some things that, that you discovered or anything that you'd like to share with the rest of the class about your discussions around project four? Just in general, like I'm really afraid to change like anything mm. until I know what all of it does. Okay. Um, am I being like overly cautious? Or... No. No. But, but, yeah. Yeah. No, but I think I think that you do have to overcome that fear because I have this. I have the same fear, and it's kind of crippling because you don't get as, you don't get as far as you could by deleting stuff or rewriting. I would say maybe refactoring. Well, you, you can also only rewrite things that you've encountered by using the debugger. You can also copy and paste and comment stuff out if you're losing info. No, yeah, I've been doing that stuff. Yeah, and, and you got GitHub, so you can you know find a stable location. But um, okay. It was just more of a comment. Than a yeah. Problem. Okay. Like, Any other observations about Project Four? I just observed that talking about it with somebody else made it really easy to understand. Okay, good. So you kind of just try to like rubber duck the whole thing. It becomes more lucid, I think. Yeah. Yes, and so then, um, you know, if, if it helps to get into a small study group and sort of bounce ideas off of each other, do that. Just you know, be careful about looking at each other's code and stuff. Um, you know what I thought I would do now, although it's getting kind of late, 7.50, um, I thought I would, uh, you know, based on some of the conversations that I had, I, I thought I'd walk through how I might start the project. Um, and so then, okay, I'm seeing some nods there. Okay, cool. And I, I think this will uh, then, I, I hope, uh, then, you know, give you some uh, ideas of where you might want to start also. Um, so I'll, I'll do that. So, uh, you know me, I like my tests, so I'm going to start uh, with, uh, start evolving it to, um, to support tests. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to start with like the, um, the, the hard problem first, which is posting, which is creating the appointment. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attack my servlet, I'm going to refactor my servlet to say, instead of adding one word to dictionary, it's going to add, a, um, add an appointment. So actually, let me get the assignment up, because... I can't remember what this assignment was all about. So project four. Okay, so uh, post posting to this URL um, with uh, with the parameters owner description begin time end time will uh, will add a new appointment. Okay, so I'm going to say instead of here, I'm going to say um, Add one appointment. Add, add appointment. Uh, add appointment to new appointment book. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to, instead of word and definition and stuff, uh, I'm going to say the following. I'm going to say, uh, let's see, the first parameter is going to be owner. Oops. Name, uh, actually, all occurrences, sure, owner. And I'm going to have the description, all occurrences, description. Uh, I'm going to have, yeah, begin time and end time. So let's have this uh, begin time equals, uh, let's see here. 1 1 2019 at 1am. I'm going to have end time equals this at 2am. Okay, so now I need to, so I'm going to mock out the, um, the, the, the request. Uh, and so this is going to be a, a put. So when, um, yep, so when the owner is owner, when the description is description, when the and what do I call it? The begin time. Yep. When the begin time parameter is begin time. When the end time is end time. Then when I call do post with that. Uh, Let's see here. I guess I don't really have any um, 
anything written there. So it's going to get uh, it's going to have a response of OK. And now instead of getting definition of owner, I'm going to say get appointment book. Oops, appointment book for the owner. Um, and actually, this I'm just going to put into a variable that is going to be book. It's not going to be book. It's going to be an appointment book. Yep, I'm going to fix that in a minute. Actually, uh, yeah, I need to fix that. Uh, and then let's see here. First, that book is not null. Not null. And that's a ham crest, right? Yeah, not null value book. And I'm going to uh, get an appointment. Let's see here. Uh, assert that book dot get appointments um, has size. Yes, has size of one. And then appointment appointment equals new. Oh, yeah, okay. Sorry, equals um, book dot get appointments. Get zero gets the first one. Oh, actually, well, I I need to write the API first. <laughs> I'm getting way ahead of myself here. So I'm going to create this class. I'm going to create it not in my integration tests, but I'm going to create it in my main endpoint book web. Uh, yeah, you better believe I want to add that in. So appointment book. This is extends abstract appointment book. Appointment book. Appointment. I need to create appointment class. It's also going to be boy. I wish we put it in the right place. Main Java appointment extends abstract appointments. Going to implement some methods. All those. I'll get back to that later. You don't have to. You have to copy your own. I don't have my existing. I, I, didn't, I don't do the assignments around here. I've mean, got you people for. Yes. Right. Exactly. Okay. All this good stuff. Okay. I'll fill in those later. This is now uh, much happier. Oh. Uh, oh, I need to fix that. Um, that's interesting. I wonder why it's complaining about that. Get appointment book. So this is now going to return on a string, but an appointment book. Um, this is not a dictionary anymore. This is appointments, appointment books. Sorry, let's call it books. No, let's call it appointment books. It's a field. And now instead of it being a string to string, it's a string to appointment books. Um, I'm just going to get rid of that. Actually, I'm going to delete some of these methods. I think I'm just going to do that. Let's delete that. Let's delete that. Somewhere here, there should be some more errors. Oh yeah, do get. No, that's not very interesting anymore. Um, this appointment books dot put. I will need to implement the post method later. Um, I'm just going to comment that out for the time being. Okay, so, so here's what I'm doing, right? I, I'm um, refactoring the code to deal with appointments and appointment books because ultimately what I want is a Java line class. That's a matcher, huh? It's a type? Okay. Is null. Oh, is not null. There you go. Um, and then we're gonna get the appointment. Appointment equals book dot get appointments. Uh, oh, that returns a collection, right? Yeah, and so then. What, there's an API now, I thought, collections.get. Yeah, let's do this the hard way, or the old-fashioned old way. Um, 
iterator.next. Actually, is there something, what else does collections have on it these days? Meh. Yeah, it doesn't have like a give me the first one, which is fine. Appointment, um, and then assert that appointment uh, is not null. Why don't you think collections has just like a .get index? Well, well, because collections aren't indexed. Not indexed. Yeah, yeah, lists are indexed. But you can, but, but you can cast, you can set it to an array very easily. Yep. Yeah. But, but but I mean. But the the order of the objects in that array is guaranteed. Uh, you know, basically it's uh, yeah. All you can do is like give me an iterator, and then the iterator knows how to give you the next one. And, and that's just all part of the abstraction. Um, yeah. So when they're in a collection, they're just sort of floating around. Exactly. Yeah, that's kind of the whole idea. It's like it's a bag. Just grab it and get one. Yeah. Yeah. Do we use any of the logic from like our previous projects, or are we kind of starting with? You'll want to start with your existing one, right? You'll want to use your appointment, your appointment book, your pretty printer, your uh, maybe some of your command line parsing if you have that abstracted. So definitely, I just haven't written that yet, and that's why I'm creating everything from scratch. Yep, no, that's, that's yep, good question. Okay, and now we want to assert that um, appointment dot get. Well, actually, wait a second. We want to say that the appointments has size one. Assert that book dot get owner name equal to, oops, equal to owner. Um, and we want to say uh, get description equal to description. And we want to say get start and begin, begin time string equal to begin time. And then we'll say get end time string equal to end time. So basically what I've done is, this is going to be my test of my do post. I make a, uh, a mock servlet request. I configure it to behave the way I would want it to behave. It's like, hey, here's, you know, these are the parameters that are there. Um, and then I uh, make a uh, mock servlet response. And I actually, I don't need to do this because I don't actually, I don't, I don't need this because I'm not, there, there's no, um, there's no testing of it. Oops. Oh, I, I, did, I need it for this purpose, but I don't need to mock out the print writer anymore because I'm not using that print writer. Uh, I do the uh, I call the do post method, um, and then the servlet code it doesn't know that it's not being invoked outside of a web container, so um, that's good. And then I verify that it gets a response of, of, of OK. And then I make sure that uh, and then I ask the servlet object, hey, give me that appointment book. And I want to make sure that the appointment was actually added. Now, if I run this, I expect it to fail spectacularly because none of this has been implemented yet. Yes. Expected reserve status 200, uh, 200, but it was not. Oh yeah, but it was. Uh, but it got instead a send error of a 412 because the required parameter word was missing. Well, that's true. So now let's look at the do post. So. Here, um, the parameters are all required on the post, um, but I don't have a pr word parameter anymore. I have an owner parameter. And this will be the owner. Ooh, nice. Okay, and then I have a description. Uh, description parameter, and this is going to be the description. Um, I'm going to do some refactoring here because I am because I see some duplicate code and I need to do it for two more. So I'm going to refactor this thing into a variable. I'm going to call it uh, parameter name. I'm going to call it parameter, sure, and uh, then I'm going to call this a get required parameter, I 
I definitely want to replace that other one. This is not going to be owner, this is going to be value. Okay, well that helps a little bit, I guess. Okay, so now, oh, I don't want to work. Oh good, it does, it will complain about it. Okay, so then uh, I want to duplicate this two more times, and I don't want description here. I want this to be uh, begin time. Oops, um, is the code recurrence. Begin time. I want this one to be end time. Nice, okay. So this is equivalent, oops, um, this is equivalent to uh, parsing your command line, right? In that, oh, look, you know, the from the outside, like in your project four, the Java runtime provides you this array of strings, which is the command line arguments. Here, the servlet runtime, the jetty, is providing you with all of the, the parameters from the, um, uh, from the request. Um, I am going to need a begin time parameter. I'm going to need an end time parameter. And this is going to be a string. Um, oh, interesting. Uh, begin time. And I'm going to need a constant here, which is end time. It's, yeah, these can be private. I noticed that in my test, I actually have this you know, magic constant again. I should probably fix that. So, I, so here, I've got all of that. Oh, did I update the, I did not, owner. Description. Now I've got all that. Now let me run this again and see how far I get. Aha, no pointer exception. Do post. Oh, interesting. Uh, well, I don't need that anymore because I'm not actually writing anything there, so that's good. Another null pointer exception. When I say book is not null. Oh, interesting. Maybe it doesn't work the way I thought. I thought it would give it a nicer message. Assert that. Huh. Oh, let me quick look that up. Because maybe I'm unsure about how to use hamcrest. Hamcrest is not null. Oh, interesting. Well, so I, don't, I didn't think I would need the is. Wait. Not null value. Okay. Not null value. Okay, well, that's interesting. So I don't know what I did there, um, but this is certainly a nicer error message. So well, I guess I have the is there for readability. Okay, now it's blowing up. It's blowing up here on line 59 because, okay, yeah, get appointment book is returning null, which is what I would expect because we didn't do anything with it. So, back to the do post. Now I gotta create myself an appointment book. Appointment book, book equals new appointment book for the owner. This is, I'll create the constructor, and I will put it into the appointment in the books map. I'll run my test again. In theory, you know, each one of these like little steps that I'm doing could be its own test. Um, that's probably a better better uh, way of thinking about it. Okay, I got a little further. 
Now it got all the way down to 61, saying that get appointments returns uh, and it throws this method is not implemented yet. That's super cool. Uh, return this dot appointments. Appointments. Create field, collection of appointment, sure. It is new array list, doesn't really matter. Oh, the fan on my machine is starting to take off. Now I quit Android Studio, so I wonder what's, uh, wonder what's going on. Okay, uh, expected a collection of size Wombo's collection of size zero. That's not surprising because I didn't create an appointment yet. So now I'm, oops, now let me go back to my servlet. Nice. Okay, so I uh, create a new appointment book and then I need to create an appointment. Uh, appointment equals new appointment. And oh, let's just set the DSR begin time, end time, the constructor, and then say book add appointment appointment. Uh, I'll now need to add that. So this dot appointments dot add appointment. Oops. Run it again. Gets a little further. Now it's barfing because get owner name returns null, or it throws this uns uh, is it implemented yet? This dot owner name equals. Oops, no, return this dot. Final. Some other method is implemented. Get description. Get begin time. End time on the appointment. Okay, so much fun. This dot description. Add a field. So description. Final. Initialize in constructor. Equals description. Thank you, IntelliJ. Let's make sure that runs. That was line 66. Now I'll probably fail on line 67. Look at that. In the future. In the future, you're all going to be very bored by this. Begin time string. Sorry, this is um, it's a little slow because I seem to do all this boilerplate stuff to get everything started. Is everything making sense so far? I should probably do a, a check-in. Yeah. Okay. Other people want to say yeah? Making sense? Okay, only a couple of people left. Anybody else? Any questions? I'm a, okay, so I'm building out the application now. So this isn't the interesting part about Project 4. This isn't like the servility stuff. This is just me building out the application so that everything works. And so this is me, this is basically me doing Project 1. Right. Hey, I got a green test. Ugh. Okay, so what did I just do again? So, okay, I implemented all the stuff that you guys did in the, the first week of class. All right, I created the application, the, uh, the appointment and the appointment books, did all of that good stuff. I needed that so my, my post would actually work. But now I've demonstrated that when I send it a request that has all the required parameters, it returns okay, and what it does is it creates internally um, my appointment book. So what I did is my servlet now stores a map of appointment books keyed off their their owner name. Okay, so now let's um, yeah yeah. Uh, what, what other options are there? Yeah, right. I mean, is it a design decision? Yeah, what is this? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yes, now, I mean, I want to be able to then retrieve that appointment book. So, yeah, it's really good, uh, because just for the test. So, yeah, if I was being like super test driven development, I would just have it 
implement just you know support one appointment book. But I know that ultimately it's got to support many. So and I had a map there already. So I guess I was being lazy. Um, but but yes. Uh, now we alternatively we could just have like a, a collection or a list of appointment books. We need to go iterate over it to find the one we're looking for. Not a big deal. Um, but you know, map just sort of gives you the easy just do it again. Well, I was just wondering why why you wouldn't just do like ordering two list appointments and then just pull that down and use the you, appointment book class has the method add appointment already, so you could just add a new appointment to it and then unfortunately okay. an yeah. appointment book has to have an owner name too, which there is a redundancy there with the mapping it to a string. But uh, you can you can leverage the the add and get appointment methods, which are super useful. So maybe yeah, it's just like, that. Uh, and you know, in thinking ahead, um, your pretty printer. What class does your pretty printer need? Appointment book. So I was like, okay, yeah, keeping them around. You know, that sort of made sense, I think. But good question, though. Yeah, I like it. Okay, so uh, refactor the dictionary example to create appointments in an appointment book. I wonder if it's gonna pass. I probably just broke something, but whatever. Okay, okay, so that's my servlet. So now I just refactored my servlet. I'm like, hey, this is cool. This is like a big part of the project. Um, as a matter of fact, let's also let's take a look at the index.html and let's fix that to, uh, to do something interesting too. Um, so now the post. So now we need to create a new appointment. Okay, and so now, wait, I've got a back, got a slash there, that's weird, okay. Okay, so now instead of word, I'm going to have owner. Instead of definition, I'm gonna have description. And, uh, oops, description. And let's see here, size, I'll make this 40. And then uh, I'll have begin time. And uh, this has to be the same as your URL parameters, because that's what it is, or is it post parameters? Um, and this will be whatever, 10? No, wait, how many digits is that? 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 4. Ah, 20. Um, and the title will be begin time. And then end time. So the title, the name is what the uh, HTTP servlet object, like the response is looking at. Well, I mean, so this does a post, right? And so a post has parameters that are sent in the body of it. Um, and um, and the way and, and the way an HTML form works then is that uh, when you have a post, the input names of the input widgets uh, are put in the body of the post. So, so yeah. when you say like uh, string owner equals response or you know get parameter, yep. uh, when it says like owner parameter, that's the name, right? Yes. So what's going on with the title? What do we use that? The title. Oh, I'm sorry. The title in HTML is just a little. It's the pop up. You'll see. Okay. It's, it's the title of the input element. So then this is used for pop-ups, for screen readers, for oh, that kind of thing. Sorry. Like, oh, yeah, so HTML. Like, you could, like, oh, I, I get it. Yeah. So I, mean, I think we'll see that in a moment. So the name is what's actually getting, like, interacted with by your code. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's plus five, no, plus four. You have, to, you have to write the text outside of it for it to be on the screen. I think the, the, the title is, like, for, like, the covering over it or something. Oh, no, you're probably right. Yeah, like, yeah, that's how you would get it. It probably looks awful, but, you know, whatever. I don't know. Maybe something like that. Yeah, it's been so long. Okay. So Maven. Um, uh, now, I was working with someone, and uh, they had changed the... Um, oops. They changed the index.html, and they had to do a clean in order to get the change. I didn't know if that was, oops, hello? Oh, because, uh, echo maven ops. Yeah, I don't want to spend yes, yeah, so I will inset.
All I heard was they just copy it from Stack Overflow and whatever. It's, it's software engineering. I. What, oh, what, what dope thing did you find on <laughs> Stack Overflow? No, no, I'm just kidding. It's, just it's a, not dope? It's just an HTML uh, you know, input thing that's aligned you know, so that the community and the fields are not all, you know, they're not all weird. It's just a straight, straight and straight. I will verify it. It is good. Thank you. Thank you. I can see it. Oh, yeah. This is most not dope. <laughs> um, you don't like your web pages to look like that? No. No, I don't. I, I don't even know what's going to happen now. So me, stuff. Actually, I don't do any validations. What do I care? Okay, it doesn't post anything back. Which Okay, oh, that's okay fine. Here, now here, here's what I should do. I should, um, I should have it return something. I should have it return... Um, uh, the two string. So now, oh, I want that stuff back from the. Oh no, good. I've got it right. No, I don't have it right here. Uh, uh, uh. No, I want this. So I do want to print something out just so I can see it, which I think I can do. Yeah, I did it before. So okay. So in my response, I then want this mock print writer, and um, I also want to. Uh, uh, how do I get the stuff out of the print writer? Oh, yeah, verify, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I want to verify that the print writer print line method uh, was invoked with appointment dot two string. So now, so now it's just so I can see what happens when I add an appointment. Um, this should blow up because it wasn't there, but that's good. Test definition, oh, whatever. Um, and now I want to go add to the do post. I want to say uh, add the appointment, and then I want to say uh, response dot get print writer. Nope. Um, uh, what was the uh, get writer? Of course. Um, dot print line appointment book. Uh, dot two string, whatever, nice and explicit. So now if I run it, then it passes. So I got to restart my jetty, right? I, I changed my servlet. I need to restart jetty. Uh, it might, you know, there might be fancy ways of running jetty where it would automatically pick up the change. I've never had much success with that, and luckily this, isn't, this app, web application doesn't take that long to run, so it's not a big deal. So now if I reload this. And I say me, blah, 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 blah. I submit. Oh, there it is. Great. And there's the two string. So actually, that's a terrible example because you can't tell what anything is. So uh, uh, do stuff from now until later. Yay, do stuff from now until later. OK. Uh, OK, so we just verified that works. So OK, here, this is how I would approach it. Oh, I would write some unit tests to get my servlet working. Because I'm familiar with that crazy Mojito stuff. You might just want to start with step two, which is working with your index.html to write a you know, plain old 1998 style HTML form to interact with it. Okay, all very nice. Okay, so now let's um, check that code in. Um, this was um, uh, update the index.html to uh, post to the appointment uh, book servlet. Okay. Commit. I'm going to push it also. Get push. Push. Okay. Now, now I want to uh, work with the REST client. So, okay. Now, um, actually, I'm going to look at the REST client integration test. Oops. Integration tests. Where are they? There we go. Point book rest client integration test. Um, remove all dictionary entries. Yeah, that's probably a good thing to do. So let's rename this to remove all appointments, point books. Um, and this is just for test purposes. You don't actually have. Um, 
that functionality in the REST API, but it comes in really handy in the tests. Um, okay, I think this one will still pass. Um, define one word, which is, okay, we'll change this to test to create one appointment. Okay. Now we got to change our appointment book REST client. Remember what the appointment book REST client is. This is on the client side. This is a Java class that wraps the REST API and provides you a Java looking interface to work with. So it makes your command line, it makes your project four main class easier to work with. Okay, test word. Well, I'm not going to call it test word anymore. I'm just going to call it owner. I'm going to call it uh, description. Oops. Description. Okay, add dictionary entry. No, it's uh, add appointment. And there's more. There's going to be a string uh, begin time equals whatever. There's going to be a string end time, which equals something else. Oh, let's just now and later. I kind of like that example. Um, okay, I'm going to add an appointment. It takes an owner description, a begin time, and an end time. And yeah, add appointment returns void. I'm not going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to, uh, now I kind of need to implement get definition here. I don't want to take that time because it's 830 at night. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to change add appointment to um, appointment to string to return the uh, appointment to string, which I think I can do, and then assert that uh, appointment to string contains string. It should have a description. It should have the begin time and it should have the end time. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the signature to have all that stuff. Um, um, what? Meh. Owner description word definition. I'm not too happy with that. We'll fix it later. And now I'm also going to change it to return a Java string. Yeah, sure, whatever. Close enough. Okay, so now I think the okay the 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 test is happy. Okay, so let's run the test. Actually, things might not compile. Did they compile? Nope. Oh yeah, this is in. Oh yeah, project four. Um, we are going to fix that later. So let's comment it out for now. Oops. Stop. Go away. Thank you. Uh, actually, I guess I want to go back to the works client tests, integration tests. Oh, this is going to fail because it's not, because Jetty's not running. Or not. Um, message isn't. Uh, yeah. There, now are you happy? Okay. Now you're going to build. Okay, it built. Let's go back and run it again. It's compiled. It's going to fail because Jetty's not running, right? Or it does. Oh, no, it got an HP status code of 412. Ooh, that's neat. Did I expect that? Yeah, probably, because I didn't. 412, I think, usually means... Well, actually, no, let, let's... Um... Nope, this, this is okay. And um, uh, okay, so then I think I also I want to see if I can get the um, message equals response dot get content, and then point book rest exception. Oh, it's right here. Um, okay, so then let's add the message to that. Oops. I don't know if this actually get returned or not. I can't remember. But let's try it again. 
yay, the required parameter owner is missing. Aha. Okay, so that's why it blew up, which is makes sense because when we well, I didn't change in the appointment book rest client. Let's go back to the test. Actually, I can just do it right here. When I call it add appointment, no, add appointment um, sets the parameters like word and definition, not the uh, owner and begin time, end time, and stuff. So there's going to be um, we're going to have ourselves a big old uh, set of params. And to make it easier to read, I'm going to say map of word to word, definition of definition. And words are going to be word, it's going to be owner, is going to be owner. Uh, description is going to be description. I'm going to have begin time, oops. The begin time, which doesn't exist. It's going to be word, and I'm going to change that to begin time. It's going to be end time, and I'm going to rename definition to end time to be more proper. Okay. Now let's try it again. Oh, interesting. Okay, so now uh, it's failing because appointment to string, so when I call add appointment, oh yeah, it returns the owner, which that is not right. I want instead to call it response.getContent. Holy cow, it worked. Okay, what did I do? Okay. So, I wrote myself an integration test. Now, remember what an integration test is. An integration test requires, uh, uses, uses two processes, uses two JVMs. One, it requires Jetty to be there. Now, I had Jetty running in the background right here. Um, and so I ran, uh, now, I, and so I had, I, I had, I had Jetty um, running with the servlet that I developed my unit test against. And so, and I used the index.html posts to demonstrate, oh yeah, that it worked. And now I've got an automated test that demonstrates that yes, that my servlet works when it's running uh, in Jetty. And so what did I do? I refactored the, um, the, the appointment book client to now have an add appointment uh, method that includes all the information you need to add an appointment. And what that does is it calls this post to my URL method with the given parameters. Now these are then the parameters that are sent to the HTTP post. So this is the same data like in the unit test I mocked out with Mockito. Here we're actually really calling the, the uh, HTTP post um, with these key value pairs, the owner description, begin time, and end time. And so then I go and call that. If something blows up, uh, it's bad. Otherwise, I go and um, I get the, the content, and we had changed the servlet to write the two string of the, um, of the appointment that was added. And so then in my test, what I do is I... Um, I say, okay, good, I'm gonna get the, re the resulting string right here. I'm gonna make sure that it has the description, the begin time and the end time, um, which are all in the two string, and it does. Okay, so this is sort of the next evolution, right? So first I got the, uh, the servlet to work, then I got the appointment book rest client to work. So now I verified that I have this Java API, this add appointment, that can then call the, um, the, the rest API. Questions on that? Yeah, yeah. Kind of a dumb question. I don't think so. But uh, so, like, the, the REST client is kind of like our command line interface to interact with the servlet. Right? No, it is a Java object wrapper around the the HTTP requests, okay. and it's an intermediate layer there uh, because I think it's good design, and also it keeps your, as we'll see in our next step, it keeps your command line interface focusing on what it's good at, which is parsing the command line. So the project four file. Is the what kind of interacts with the command line? Yeah, and, and that'll be next. And then it's going to like interact with the REST client to like make content. Exactly right. So project four parses the command line, then uses the appointment book REST client object to make the uh, REST calls. Okay. 
but but by 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 factoring your code this way, you can then write a, you know write the Java API. You can, so instead of having to like send in, well actually what you can do is you can make sure that you can call the REST API without having to write your command line. Or having to get you know so instead of starting with the command line, you start with the servlet. You you then have a client which is this uh, Java API in the point book REST client, and then your project four becomes pretty simple because it parses the command line, just calls this method, okay. and we'll see that next. So basically, uh, the servlet is so kind of like you use the browser to interact with the server. And the project four will be like interacting with command line and then we pass to like the rest line to contact to the server. Yep, I'll, and that's going to be the final step, and we're going to do that next. Okay. Yep. So let me um, commit all this good stuff. And so then um, update the appointment book rest client to uh, invoke the rest API. Oops. Okay, so I have an integration test that validates that I can call the appointment book uh, API, uh, appointment book REST client API, and now I'll go to the project four, and now, oh, um, let's see here, uh, test removal mappings, sure, no command line arguments, yeah, 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 empty server, I don't know if it's all going to work, who cares though. Um, Add definition. Okay, great. So now this is going to be add appointment. Got to go through all this stuff again. It's going to be owner. Owner is going to be description. Got to do stuff. And I'm going to need the string begin time. Now string end time equals later. Invoke main host name port owner description begin time end time assert that oh yeah right okay uh, so that we get x code zero yep get the text written standard out assert that Interesting. Okay, um, and then assert that the output contains description, begin time, and end time. I'm not gonna. I don't have all that querying functionality implemented, um, but what I do have is this. So now, if I go to run this. Uh, I don't know what it's going to do. Blows up. Oh, extraneous command line argument. Now, right, okay, so it's got too many command line arguments. Okay, now, so I start working on my project four main. Project four main. So let's see here. Uh, host name port, word, then becomes, um, or, uh, sure, I'll occur. No, let's just say owner. And then definition becomes uh, description, and I need a begin time, Oops. and I need an end time, and I have to go through all this nonsense. And then so if I say else if begin time equals null, begin time equals arg. Or arg and time equals null and time equals arg okay so if owner equals null yada 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 if description equals null great otherwise post the new appointment so I'll create the new appointment create the Appointment. Uh, 
Oh, message equals uh, message equals this. Hey, it passed. So what did I do? Um, I implemented my command line parsing by adding more logic to find the the begin time and the end time. Uh, I still, you know, use the same stuff of, of uh, getting the host and the port. I created the appointment rest client and I called add appointment with all those parameters from the command line. And it all worked because I had already implemented the add appointment. We're working in small steps, right? You know, this is where we would do this. Okay. Um, and now for the final, I'm going to put this in the background. Now I'm going to do a Maven package so I can create, I, I want to verify that I can do it on the command line. Oops, what doesn't it like? It probably failed some tests. Yeah. <laughs> do skip tests. I know, right? <laughs> right now, Uncle Bob is crying. <laughs> For danger, yes, that's right. Look, Ma, no unit tests. Take that, old man. Yeah. Okay, and so now when I say Java dash star target appointment book dot sure. <laughs> You just change your pawn to turn it off too. Anyway, um, uh, er, uh, right, this runs it. Yes, so the host, localhost, localhost, 8080. Uh, oh, it's not word definition anymore. It's owner, me, well, no, it doesn't matter. Me, uh, description is uh, <laughs> finish up class, <laughs> um, now and soon. Uh. Yay! And it worked. Could you need to run Jay to... Jay's running in the background. Okay. Right. Is it just BG to put it in the back? Yep. Okay, well, uh, control Z to send it the the signal to um, to suspend it. And then you say BG right after it. It's And then says like the most recent um, uh, process. Please run in the background. Yep. Yeah, I get FG to get it back. Yeah. Unix back in the day. Yeah. It's well, that's the funny thing where it's like, you know, this is like what well, this is what you had to do 25 years ago. Like when you only had like well, it's what you definitely had to do like 30 years ago when like all you had was a VT, you know, 220 terminal or whatever, you know, all this process stuff. But you kids today with your multiple windows, boy. Anyway. Uh, yeah, and so that's it. Um, and so now, so, so, so here's what I wanted to show you. Um, the, you know, a way to approach this is to implement your, your servlet functionality first and validate it with a unit test. Yep, you use the, you know, the mock objects and stuff, which is a little bit getting used to, but, you know, you sort of do enough copy and paste and sort of, you know, that thing. Oh, and by the way, you know, along the way, you can be debugging all of this. Now, I mean, my logic, I sort of had in my head, I didn't get things wrong. Um, but, you know, you can attach, you know, you can run your unit test under the debugger. You can, uh, you know, with your integration test, you can have a debugger attached to your jetty uh, and, and, and stuff. Uh, and so then I started with, let me commit this. I've got three things going at the same time. Um... Uh, updated uh, update uh, project for main uh, to invoke the rest client. Commit and push. And of course, it's going to fail because of all the tests. But anyway, um, but uh, and so the first thing I did was I uh, evolved my servlet uh, and I validated that with a unit test. And so, like that's like all my logic, right? And that's, that's the kind of the you know the, the 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 meat of the or the, the guts. The oh boy, this is all kidding. Rather anyway, the uh, the logic, the business logic of um, uh, of, of the program. Um, and then I worked on the client side. The first thing I did was I looked at the uh, appointment book REST client, and I said, okay, Greg, I'm going to have a simple Java API that then calls my REST API. I evolved it there. Um, and then I refactored my uh, project one, project four integration test to uh, 
to um, uh, to just call the, the API. So do some more command line parsing and call the uh, client API. So anyway, I hope that gives you, you know, I think so, I think for some of you that was like validating. I was like, oh yeah, I did that too. Um, but then for, especially for, because you're right, seeing all this stuff together um, is different and it's a challenge um, because you're dealing with two processes and you've got this kind of, uh, you know, uh, ephemeral, not ephemeral uh, um, elusive, uh, you know, rest call where it's like, wait, you're not looking at that code because yes, that's taking care of for you. Um, but anyway, uh, it all comes together in the end and you've got the test to prove it. Um, and that's how you get an A. Right? Okay. Any more questions on that? I had a real quick Yeah, one. yeah. I'm looking at this, uh, like, this in the client in the appointment book rest client, uh, there's a lot of calls to something called like map uh, dot of. Oh yeah, map dot of. Yeah, yeah. So I'm wondering if this map dot of thing, like if you go to the top where it's empty, that does that iterate over everything? Um, that I guess I'm I'm curious. Two things. I I, I believe that if there's no if it takes no arguments, then mm -hmm. it just goes through everything. It's an empty map. Oh. So yeah, it, this is a, um, a factory method um, on that interface. Uh, it's such a super convenient. It, it makes it really code really easy to read. Because otherwise, I mean, how, how do you how do you well? I mean, how, how do you do this without without this? Well, uh, you have to say actually, it's not so bad with one of them. New hash map dot put. I suppose this isn't this isn't so terrible. Oops. What does it like? Count for arguments. Oh, here we go. So it's a factory method in, in which? Uh, uh, the, the map interface. Oh, OK. So it doesn't care if, if what you're written. Like, you know how you redefine your uh, map to be have an appointment book and a string? Uh, the map of so a method doesn't, doesn't care what the map is. Right. Doesn't care what the map is. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't. It, it'll. It will work if we change. You mean like on line fifty one, it's map string string, but we changed it to map string appointment Okay. Oh, it's it's not. It's a different. Okay, that's what I was wondering. Thanks. Oh right, this doesn't actually return the. Oh right, yeah. So this doesn't work. So you have to do. Ugh. You have to do this. Oh. Oh, okay. I see. So that's what it's. That's what it's. Oh, cool. Exactly right. Those represent the URL parameters. Yeah. So if you wanted to, so without map.of, you'd have to do nonsense like this, and it's awful and it's ugly, and that's why they, uh, you know, recently in the language, uh, introduced this map of um, map, map of factory method, and it's actually really interesting how this is implemented. Um, it's actually an over uh, overloaded method that takes like two parameters, four parameters, six parameters, eight parameters, um, and so you can uh, then you know easily just sort of like have a piece of code like this, which is like way more readable than having like four calls to map dot put. Yeah, I think I get it. Thanks. Nice. Any other questions? Okay, that's your project four. Go have fun with it, um, and I'll see you again next week. And uh, we'll like really dive into Android. Um, and, and let me know, uh, especially people that weren't here in class, uh, what your experiences are getting the emulator to work and everything like that. And yeah. okay, have a good time, everybody. Ooh.